What's up, y'all? I'm Rutini. Welcome back to the Technicolor Hoedown Vlog. Jesus, that's long. Can, can we get something smaller? Last time, we were looking at some really basic equipment. This time, we're going to look at some goodies. Bang the intro. So I celebrated my birthday recently, and I actually timed the launch of the channel as a bit of a birthday present to myself. Now Amazon's a little bit backed up these days under all of the circumstances, but a few people, friends and family did send gifts and they've all finally arrived. So I'd like to extend a huge thank you to them. Thank you so much, especially for supporting this new project right at the beginning. My cat is trying to break into the room. He's not supposed to be in this episode. We better get to checking out the loot. Oh. Quick aside for this little hero. We picked up a spring tension arm recently and it's been an absolute lifesaver. I'm actually shooting most of the footage for this episode on this platform. You get a ball mount here, a spring loaded, phone clamp. Obviously you can move it wherever you need. And the clamp at the other end makes it very easy to position wherever you need it for the shot at hand. This is going to make things real handy, especially shooting in close indoor spaces. Now, if you've seen the first full episode of the Technicolor Hoedown, and if you haven't, that's okay. There'll be a link to it right around here at the end of this video. But if you have seen it, you'll understand why I'm so excited about this gift right here. The I was going to say buy a mic, but whatever. Rode Video Micro on camera vit cinema type mic. What you get here? Let's see what we got. Little little packaging, little anti-moisture. But you get you start off with this nice lush dead cat which is gonna keep the wind down. This is a very windy city, so this is gonna be essential for any kind of outdoor filming to cut down on that bloody wind noise. But inside, you've got this little shotgun mic, a little directional. Let's see, what have we got? I believe it's a kind of yeah. <laughs> Not too much on the box as far as, uh, as, far as specs, but I believe this is a condenser mic, but I know it's a shotgun type mic. It's very directional. You've got to keep it face up, so that's cool. They give you this cute little mount for it with a hot shoe footing on the bottom and a screw down for a mic stand. And that just clips on here and keeps it nice and springy so you don't get vibration noise. And I have been told on the YouTubes that once you get it set up on your camera, you're supposed to clip that into one of these little notches to keep it from bouncing around so much. And that makes sense. So that's gonna clip onto things. And eventually, I'm gonna to have to find a way to stick that straight onto my phone for some seriously lightweight run and gun. I, I'm gonna need a hot shoe mount that I can stick onto that little elastic phone clamp. Always bits and big pieces to be picked up and acquired with this phone stuff. But that's pretty much what you get with the road. Uh, some instructions and quick start guides that I'll never look at in there. But you get a nice little, little elastic or a little spring tension up audio cable, the mic itself, and a dead cat. This is, this is going to sound nice. Uh, I have looked at these online. They're very directional. Uh, they're very specific in their sound. Uh, so I may have to do my post-production a little differently. I don't know. I'm excited to try this out. The Rode Video Micro. Now, like I said, once you start trying to put video and audio equipment together real quickly, you run out of adapters. So I had to pick up this little set. These were a side piece, these little screw down, uh, the male side of a hot shoe mount. But really, I needed this little bracket. Uh, gives me a, a quarter inch threading on each end and four or three, whoops, four sided piece, three mounts to, to uh, attach various other hot shoe equipped stuff together. And you know, I can't do it right now while I'm talking to you, but I love screwing stuff together. So this is gonna be a lot of fun and 
it's kind of a necessary evil when it comes to this sort of thing. So I've been trying to keep it to a minimum. This this is where you get nickel and dimed on these kinds of things, but uh, trying to keep it to a dull roar so far. And so far, so good. One challenge you'll run into very quickly trying to attach audio equipment to modern cell phones is the absence of headphone cable connections. They've taken those out. It makes a bit of sense besides just trying to suck money out of you for AirPods. It does improve the waterproofness of the phones a good bit to not have a big electrically charged hole. But anyway, USB-C seems to be the flavor of the day. So what I got was this little three port job. You can do it with a single pass, uh, but I wanted to be able to charge the phone and connect a mic at the same time. I could also run uh, audio for sound monitoring. Uh, that gives me a lot more options when, and it's really the only way to connect microphones to USB-C is to run an adapter, something like this. This one seems pretty flashy. The Osmo Mobile 3 from DJI. It's a cell phone mounting gimbal. If you don't know what a gimbal is, it's a three section multi-axis active stabilization system, which is a real fancy way to say it's got a bunch of gyroscopes in it and some little motors to keep whatever you have attached to it stable relative to your the motion of the platform that it's mounted to. Uh, in other words, it's a steady cam. It's also the only one that folds up nice and convenient like this. Isn't that fancy? So it locks into place and your phone goes in the clip up here. Uh, they make larger ones of these for heavier cameras and it feels very strange in the hand while powered off. But once you power it on, it has a little more life to it once it's in an active mode. Uh, but it has to pair with a camera to do that. Uh, it spins on three axes and between those manages to com pretty completely smooth out footage. They also added an active target lock and tracking system from their drone program. But you can just bounce along with it pointed generally at someone and it just locks on. So it's a lot of fun to play with. And for farther long distance uh, establishing shots and nature views, it really delivers a nice smooth image. I'm really looking forward to playing with this. It's been a lot of fun to just try out at first and getting that smooth motion to a shot. Ah, oh, buttery, buttery fun. So that's the DJI Osmo 3. Uh, and I've been really impressed with it so far. Less impressed with the software support though. We, uh, we fixed the glitch. You're not using the camera app that came with the gimbal you don't have access to most of the gimbal's good features the basic stabilization is always there but not the target tracking and some of the other stuff uh, meanwhile the camera app that came with the gimbal is good but it's not the best app out there it doesn't have much in the way of manual settings and it can't work with uh it can't natively support an anamorphic lens wait anamorphic lenses I was a little bit cautious about this one, maybe a tad skeptical, but I went ahead and asked for it by name. The Moment Anamorphic 1.33 Perspective Lens. Now I've used other add-on phone lenses in the past and found them pretty disappointing. I think we're gonna do a little segment about that in the future, but this is what you get from Moment and it was built well enough that I wanted to give it a look. So if you go with their system, you get a phone case that has these little sockets that line up with, with the cameras on your phone. So you have to get the right case for your model phone. But the one case is universal across their line of lenses. Now look at this beauty. It's got some nice heft to it for its size. It's, it's surprisingly heavy. And you can see that, you can just start to see that blue line cutting across it. That, that's pretty much the color of flare that you get uh, out of this lens. I've taken it out and played with it a little bit. Uh, it does take a bit of getting used to as far as your, your shot composition, and you've got to deal with the anamorphic stretch ratio. Uh, you either are going to do that in, in post or maybe in camera, but that's a little wonky. It seems to work a little bit better when you do it in post. 
That's from an initial test, though. I've only played with it once or twice. But what you get, aside from the lens, you get a little bag, you get the lens cover, uh, and then you're good to go. So this would mount to your phone, and the bayonet, that's literally what they call this part. How much fun could I have? They call the mount a bayonet. Bayonet! But it's a simple twist lock on there that doesn't seem to work when there's not actually anything to lock on to, which is kind of interesting. Oh, that little bolt fell out. Oh, that's good to have noticed. That might be a, that's kind of a problem. You'll see what I'm talking about. I've taken it out and fiddled with it like one time and I did not mess with that bolt, but there's supposed to be a tiny little hex nut there and it has come loose. I hope, uh, hope I can find that because if I can't, if this doesn't sit at its proper alignment, it doesn't work. So I hope I can find that little part. Uh, Anyway, sorry for the distraction there. I just kind of noticed that midway through, and I feel like I'm just going to leave it in and roll on from here. I found it. Look at this little bastard. That thing is tiny. Tiny! Still, it's been a real... The lens itself looks great. There's another clip that I've got put up the other day, Nature Time, that I filmed on this lens. And frankly, the detail level, uh, the detail and crispness out of this lens wrecked YouTube's ability to encode and deliver it. it, it anytime it was in motion, there was too much detail uh, to be passed on their streaming service in any kind of efficient way, and it sort of fell apart. Okay, I would not have done that much stupid on purpose. Now, this last one doesn't have anything to do with shooting video on a phone, but it's neat, and I wanted to show it to you. The iHealth PT3 is a no-touch thermal scanning thermometer thing that looks like it came out of Star Trek. Regulator of his artificial heart has been fused. He's got liver. So there's really not much to this one. It's, it's, that's it. That's all that's in there. The device, a couple of instructions, and it really is as simple as it looks. So check this out. No touch or anything. One button, super simple. Bing. How cool is that? Now, if it ain't obvious, these ain't paid endorsements or sponsorships. I will not bow to any sponsor. Just first impressions of gifts from friends and family. So again, thank you. This stuff's awesome. Thanks again for watching, and come on back for more on the Technicolor Hoedown. We'll be looking at how I rig all of this stuff together, probably some comparisons of different lenses that are out there, some good, some not so good, and eventually I'm going to get that Pip-Boy demo edited. In the meantime, try to find some fun out there, stay safe, and remember, art is a survival strategy.